What's going on everybody? It's John from Awe of Tech with a very special video for you today, bringing you my first Ryzen PC build. So this is for everything from content creation, encoding, rendering, gaming, and anything that a prosumer would want. And that's somebody that wants professional quality, but not at the cost of what Intel was offering with the i7-6900K, the i7-6850K, and the i7-6800K, which I have with me today. And I also have the full Ryzen lineup, the Ryzen denoting that mainstream two prosumer, seven denoting enthusiast, and that X denoting high performance and XFR. So the flagship that I have in this Ryzen build right now sets you back 499. So pretty enthusiast, great stuff right there. Let's quit wasting time guys and get right into this video. So diving right into this mainstream two prosumer build. That's professional quality, professional performance. That's right, the flagship Ryzen 7 1800X clocked at 3.6 gigahertz overclocks quite easily out of the box to over four gigahertz with the Sense MI technologies that AMD has invested a lot. So let's talk about the installation process. Well, the motherboard is absolutely amazing. So the motherboard, of course, is on the new AM4 platform to have compatibility with these new Ryzen CPUs. This is the MSI X370 Titanium. Retails for $299. This is actually by far the best board I've seen and have had personal experience with. The features are just so abundant. It supports up to 64 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, has connectivity galore with USB 3.1 one gen 2 and included turbo m.2 with an m.2 shield turbo u2 and all this with steel armor to hold everything very securely in place supports up to two-way sli or three-way crossfire the quality exceptional and installing the cpu is pretty straightforward and simple just lift the retention arm up then grab your chip not touching of course any of the pins on the bottom try not to get any grease from your fingers on the top surface of the chip so holding it from the side look at the arrow that it has in one of the corners and line that up with the corresponding dot on the motherboard then gently set it into place after that just lower the retention arm back down and it will lock into place in the socket and moving it on now to the cooler this one was actually included with the amd review kit from noctua a dedicated special edition for amd's am4 socket sets you back just 65 dollars this is the nh u12 se am4 it's premium grade has a copper base and heat pipes aluminum cooling fins. It's the perfect size, really slim, and at just 158 millimeters in height, it goes perfect with almost all mid-size and above cases. And it's really nice to see cooler support from all sorts of different manufacturers coming in droves right now. Just be sure with whatever cooler you go with, it fits socket AM4 and you're good to go. And conveniently, there's some high-end NTH1 thermal paste in the box, which I use to apply just a pea-sized amount on the surface of the processor. So this is definitely professional grade solution provides minimal thermal resistance and it's really outstanding. Now the cooler came out of the box as easy to install as literally lining it up with the holes and just tightening the screws down on each side. You can then attach the included fan which is typically beige and light brown in Noctua fashion. This one's a black variant, no biggie, it's pretty cool. So by using the provided thin clips, just latch them around the edges of the fan and then move them forward to grasp within the fins of the cooler for, for extra snugness. Now grab the CPU fan cable and plug it into the CPU fan connector that's right above. It's labeled on the motherboard towards the top. So let's move it all along now to the random access memory. This has official support for Ryzen. This is two 8 gigabyte sticks of DDR4 Corsair Vengeance LPX RAM at 3000 megahertz for a total of 16 gigabytes in dual channel, setting you back $129. So to install, just open the retention levers on the memory module slots in DIMMs 2 and 4, since that's what this motherboard manual indicates the configuration needed for dual channel. Now just holding the RAM, line that indention up of the memory with the groove in the track and just press down until the retention levers snap back into place. You'll hear two very distinct snaps for a total of four snaps for both memory modules. Now let's take our attention to the case. Don't forget to install the IO shield.
sealed. So just go to the back of the case, look for that rectangular hole, line it up, keyboard hole up top, speakers on the bottom, and apply pressure from within until it snaps into place. This is an easy one to forget, so don't start installing your motherboard without putting that I.O. shield first. You'll thank me later. Okay, so now let's put that motherboard within the case. We're rocking the NZXT S340 Elite case today. So installing that new motherboard, there's nine mounting holes within the NZXT case. One of them is actually a raised standoff, so you don't need a screw for that. It goes in the center mounting hole of your motherboard and helps secure the board while you're installing it. So what's great about upgrading is you don't always have to start the build completely over. So I actually have left my power supply in, my storage drives already installed with SATA data and SATA power cables already connected. So just be sure if you're leaving any components inside, if you are doing an upgrade, move all the SATA cables, the front USB 3 cable, the front umbilicals out of the way. You don't want your motherboard going on top of these during the installation. And that all said, just line up the mounting holes on the motherboard with the standoffs in the case. Visually make sure there's no stray standoffs or no extra standoffs, depending on your case that could potentially damage your motherboard, short your motherboard if there's a stray. Then use the provided five millimeter screws that come with your case to secure the motherboard into place. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're good to go. And for storage up front in the SSD caddy, none other than a great value from P and Y, a 480 gigabyte solid state drive, excellent sequential read and write speeds, and just sets you back $137. That's for 480 gigabytes. Looks really clean up in the front of the NZXT case. And for the power supply, I went with one from EVGA for just $99. This is the EVGA Platinum Certified P2 power supply. It has a 140 millimeter silent fan with double ball bearings. So very long lifespan, 10 year warranty, really nice braided cables. It's fully modular. So you can decide what cables you want, what cables you don't want. I really appreciate that with this power supply. And we are well past the halfway point already guys. Let's get into the wiring. That's a little bit of the tedious part. So grab the front umbilicals. That's the four tiny connections on those wires and look for the pins right above the label JFP1 underneath. Route the four wires with the tiny connectors to connect hard disk drive LED, power LED. And now is also a really good time to connect the large motherboard connector. Yeah, the huge 24 pin connector with a clip on one side. You can't really miss this one guys. It snaps right into place on the right middle middle side of the motherboard and you'll hear it click into place. So let's move it on along now to the graphics card from MSI, the GTX 1070 Gaming X. This red dragon looks beastly, has RGB lighting, has some red, looks like fire on the side. Really cool looking backplate. Installation is really easy. And this GPU only sets you back $415. So to install it, just look to the highest PCI Express slot. There's steel armor, so it's gonna hold it very securely into place. Now don't forget guys, you gotta give power to that graphics card. So route the power cables. They're actually labeled PCI-E. That's the PCI-E power cables. You're going to need a six pin and you can combine a six pin and a two pin to make an eight pin. So it's going to be a total of 14 pins and they will snap right into place and applying a little bit of pressure to the connectors. You'll hear them snap right into place. So now put the side panel to the NZXT SV40 Elite case back on. That tempered glass, how amazing does that look? And you are just about ready to boot up your new AM4 Ryzen PC for the very first time. And now your epic workstation battle station is ready to take on the world. Just get the power cable, plug it into the power supply, boot it up as usual. And I've had some time on this beast. So let me bring you guys my preliminary benchmarks in the applications that I use a lot, as well as some synthetic benchmarks. And also, of course, in games that I like to play a lot, those AAA titles. So let's start it off now with something we're all familiar with. So in 3D Mark Fire Strike Ultra, the 6700K with a score of 4,532 and the 1800X with a score of 4,586. And for more synthetic testing, Cinebench R15, we know that really is gonna take advantage of all that computational prowess of the 1800X. And of course, that the score really just blew away the 6700K at 1600. And moving it on along now to some very real world application, and that's gonna be in rendering and exporting. More specifically in Adobe Premiere, I know the Adobe applications are very popular and somebody who has a productivity setup or a workstation is more than likely gonna be using something from the Adobe lineup and the results were very 
pleasing. It took my old Intel system 39% longer to render the same video. And the results also very pleasing for video exporting the Ryzen 7 1800X system doing it much faster. So let's move it on now to gaming because you know I love to game. So I have a 4K display. I usually have it at 1440p because I'm rocking the GTX 1070 and that's really the sweet spot for the 1070. And these are mostly in-game benchmarks since I wanted to remove the chance of human error. So Batman Arkham Knight in-game bench, high settings, results are pretty similar. Shadow of Mordor 1440p Ultra, the in-game benchmark. Again, results very similar. Rise of the Tomb Raider 1440p, very high. Anti-aliasing 16X, this is in the geothermal valley. So this was with DirectX 12. What's significant here is that the minimum FPS on the Ryzen 7 1800X system was a bit higher. And now for Witcher 3 1440p Ultra, hair works on. The Division at 1440p Ultra settings, in-game benchmark. And that's all I got for this video, guys. You let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Is Ryzen 7 worthy of being AMD's flagship enthusiast chip? And has AMD sort of disrupted the market, created a whole category for us, what was previously quite expensive, couldn't really get your hands on professional multi-threads like you could in an i7-6900K until now for half the cost. So this is excellent for the prosumer. So whether you want workstation, battle station, encoding, rendering, what I think it's great for is all of the above, everything, all those applications that take advantage of lots of computation. The computational power from the multi-thread is very clear. And I think we're only at the very beginning of game developers really turning their attention towards these very high threads. Because in the past, who's buying an i7-6900K to game on? It's obviously going to be for work and other applications that are really going to take advantage of multi-thread. And up until now, twice the amount of people buy CPUs under $300 and 99% under $500. So that left the market for 16 threads, 12 threads, pretty niche. And you know, not really going to get the attention of game developers, software developers until it's actually becoming mainstream. And that's where AMD is innovative. It's ahead of its time. It's pushing us further into the multi-thread era, which is gonna be great for us in the long run because you see how quickly NVIDIA graphics, AMD Radeon graphics are having insane leaps year after year. I don't know if a four core eight thread was really gonna cut it for much longer. I mean, think about it, GTX 970 to GTX 1070, around 50% gain. Then you have in the same time period, i7 4790K to i7 7700K, around 10% gain. So you don't need to be a wizard in compound interest math to see at that rate, four cores, eight threads is not gonna cut it for long and allowing the developers to focus their attention by making this market segment so accessible by everybody. It's just gonna be great for everybody in the long run because I think we're gonna see better overall performance in gaming, less bottlenecks. Once the optimization is really fine-tuned by the developers, by this new creation of a category, the accessibility of chips that have performance that Previously was way out of our hands with Intel's pricing structure. Now it's in our hands, it's in our grasp, and this is the future. AMD is the future and it's leading the way. Thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe to my channel, Off Tech, if you're not subscribed. Can't wait to catch you in the next one. Peace.